Gaming Belt presents 15 games that are hard to learn, but absolutely worth it. Not every game is meant for unwinding, or perhaps more accurately, there are some games that present a fairly high barrier to their inherent fun. Is the struggle rewarding, especially with all the frustration those initial few hours bring? Depending on the game you play, it can be. So, let's take a look at 15 games which are ultimately worth the long hours of suffering. Bloodborne Veterans of From Software's Dark Souls series were in for something different with Bloodborne. Though combat was mechanically similar, it was faster with the ability to sidestep along with dodge roll. Shields were pretty much non-essential. Visceral attacks were awesome, and sometimes attacking foes to regenerate lost health was the best option. For those who have never played a From Software game, Bloodborne takes time to properly get a hold of, especially the bosses, but it delivers a rich story, fully realized world, and excellent combat. Trackmania Though Trackmania is designated as an arcade racing game, there's more to it than just racing. Tracks have their own unique obstacles along with turns and jumps. With the game's high-speed approach, it may be difficult learning how to control vehicles, especially when you want to get a gold ranking in each track. That is the main appeal though, learning the track and improving your skills to the point of mastery. Is it a long slog? Sure, but that's one of the joys of racing games, constantly performing better to shave a few extra seconds off the clock to be the best. VVV VVV The deviously difficult VVV VVV doesn't let you jump. You'd figured that would make things more streamlined, but the game gets around this by reversing the player's gravity on certain surfaces, depositing them on the bottom or top of the screen. Alternating between these is ultimately how you get around. Some surfaces even take you from one side of the screen to the other. Do we mention the sheer number of things that can insta-kill you? Mastering VVV, VVV, and finding everything requires an understanding of the levels, pitch-perfect movements, and stellar muscle memory. It's worth it in the end, though. Except for getting here is half the fun. Just, just trust us. Dive Kick As a two-button fighting game, you wouldn't think Dive Kick would have such a massive learning curve. Underneath the simple control scheme is a lot of depth, though. You can't move in the traditional sense, as characters can only jump up in the air or move away from opponents using the kick button. Playing mind games, learning how to control space, getting that vital blow to end a round. All this and more dictates the flow of Dive Kick, and it's a ton of fun when you get into it. Dota 2 You've probably heard it time and time again. Someone has more than a thousand hours into Dota 2 but believes they know nothing. True enough, this MOBA, which mixes real-time strategy with RPG mechanics and tactical squad play, is unfathomably deep, even if you already know the genre's essentials. From the wide roster of heroes to the potential hero combination and strategies, Dota 2 also benefits from constant balancing that refines how certain characters play. However, once everything falls into place, matches can be incredibly competitive and fun to engage in, or horribly toxic and frustrating. It's the best of both worlds, and it's free. Dwarf Fortress The archaic visual style of Dwarf Fortress is one thing, but understanding the game's numerous systems while building the perfect fort is another. Taking proper advantage of your dwarves, managing their tasks and avoiding the numerous seemingly random things that can wipe out your fort while taking resource gathering, defense, and digging into account seems like a nightmare. Nevertheless, the potential for storytelling, different worlds, and endless experiences has kept Dwarf Fortress going for a long, long time. Super Meat Boy The core controls for Super Meat Boy and its movement options from wall running to long jumping aren't hard to pick up. However, levels are full of devious traps and ways to die. You'll have to figure out the exact timing and split-second jumps needed to traverse most hazards, which means a lot of trial and error and dying. However, when you're actually in the zone and braving the game's toughest levels, there's nothing quite like it. Vagrant Story Square Enix's forgotten action RPG slash dungeon crawler combines a theatrical presentation with gorgeous aesthetics and amazing combat. Getting into the combat is perhaps the biggest hurdle though. Vagrant Stories' combat involves pausing, opening up a wireframe-like sphere around an enemy, targeting the right body part, and chaining attacks together in a rhythmic fashion. Factors like magic, break arts, risk, defending, elements, and different damage types will influence one's success in combat. It's a lot to take in, but combat feels dynamic and involving, painting protagonist Ashley Riot as a one-man army. Hearthstone 
Hearthstone is a collectible card battler that plays out in turns, which sounds simple enough. Even the prospect of battling to reduce the enemy hero's health to zero while choosing your own hero is fairly straightforward. It's understanding the interactions between cards, from minions and spells to weapons and hero cards, triggering special effects, properly planning out which card to play as mana increases, and so on is also paramount. Given the number of cards added to the game since its launch in 2014, there's a lot of catching up to do, but Hearthstone is perhaps one of the best card battling games available today. Duelist You might think this is a Hearthstone clone with awesome pixel art graphics, but Duelist does a lot more. Instead of just placing cards down, you essentially summon them as units on a board. This board is divided into grids, around which your units and even the general can move. So on top of learning which cards are good, how they interact with each other, and so on, keeping track of the opponent's position is also paramount. Though matchmaking these days has a lot of players down, Duelist still offers a gorgeously fun alternative to Hearthstone. Rogue Legacy If you've played your share of roguelikes, Rogue Legacy will be familiar ground. The game throws in platforming and Metroidvania-like exploration for additional spice. Though you find gold to purchase upgrades and abilities, you're really doing this so that your heirs will have an easier time on the next run. Heirs are basically new characters you play as after dying which benefit from improvements unlocked from earlier playthroughs. The problem is that they have random traits like colorblindness or dwarfism. Getting the right heir can be a challenge in itself, but memorizing boss routines and eventually beating the game in one sitting is immensely rewarding. StarCraft 2 when a game has pro players claiming it's too tough to master, even if that was back in 2015, you just know you're in for a rough time. Campaign-wise, StarCraft II may not be all that difficult for your average fan to get through and is pretty fun. However, competitively, some players feel that the economy and overall mechanics aren't intuitive enough. Many strategies that have been fun in the first StarCraft are a lot less viable, creating a tough environment to thrive in. But if you can struggle through and stomp the competition, there is a strange feeling of power that comes with it. Spelunky Spelunky is one of the best regarded roguelike games ever created. It's also notoriously difficult to get into, not just because of the platforming is littered with hazards and enemies, but because of the amount to learn. Using bombs and ropes at the right time is paramount. Fighting shopkeepers and taking their wares is a quick way to gain an advantage even if their brethren comes back for revenge. Despite its relative age and high difficulty, Spelunky offers a uniquely fun experience even several hundreds of hours later. Kerbal Space Program Squad's Kerbal Space Program brings an unprecedented amount of freedom and massive scale with so much to do. Then again, have you ever tried to build a space station? You'll have to do that and create rovers, rockets, launch pads, and so on. The process of managing these hundreds of moving parts is pretty crazy, and trying to abide by the laws of physics while establishing a foothold in space, even more so. Rome and space stations weren't built in a day though, and the payoff can be immensely satisfying. Celeste Much like Super Meat Boy, the fundamentals of Celeste aren't too hard. Knowing how to apply them, especially in levels with specific hooks and gimmicks, can be the real head knocker. Pulling off wall hangs into dash stones or inputting the right directional commands during some sequences can be a challenge. Doing these things repeatedly over a single level can be downright trying for some people. However, Celeste rewards players with a deeply emotional story and a progression curve that feels challenging without being unfair. Unless you get to the B and C side levels, that is. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.